Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Um, so uh, Dash Out of Leo was our other um, hope for matching the, the constrained budget, staying within the constrained budget. The point here was to get to um, get out of low Earth orbit as soon as possible and actually make it somewhere. Um, we used the deep space option um, as, as our uh, uh, destination, uh, set of destinations. Again, we've got the shuttle flyout in March of 2011, ISS deorbit in um, early 2016, so all of our money here is going to, to exploration as soon as possible. Um, and uh, uh, we've uh, moved out the lunar surface program a little bit in the future on, on this one. Uh, next slide. Okay, so this is what the dash out of LEO looks like. And um, we've, we've, we've actually uh, now renamed this, and we have our, our favorites. Um, when we first started the runs, I thought that this looked more like a saunter out of LEO. Then, as we looked at it more closely, it turns out that it's much more of a trudge out of LEO. You essentially don't get, you know, you just don't get there. Um, you know, the, the, the message is you get the, the heavy lift vehicle in, in 2028, um, but, uh, you know, you, you, you just, you lose um, the ability to make it even to a near-Earth object. You lose the lunar lander. Um, so you, you just, uh, you know, you thought you were designing something that would put all your efforts on getting out of low Earth orbit. Uh, but again, I think here's where Jeff would make the make the point that the um, the fixed costs, the carrying costs of uh, just um, you know the of the infrastructure that you've got are kind of killing you and keeping you from really getting uh, getting going and developing the systems that you that you need. Now again, um, we we didn't try to to optimize this. Um, we've only had time to iterate these a certain number of times, but you don't have to look too long to say you, you would just would not run a program this way, um, that, that this budget is simply not friendly to exploration. And it's, it's actually very, very difficult to, um, as I said at the beginning of these, it's very difficult to find an exploration scenario that actually fits within this uh, very restrictive budget guidance that we've that we've been given. And Sally, for the for the public, could we could you just mention why there's some dips and some overages on this chart? I and mean, this one is constrained to the budget. Yeah. If people are wondering. Yeah, this is this is a little bit. Um, this was a uh, a chart that um, uh, we could get to fit a little bit better given one given time to do a little bit more tweaking. So the process that goes on here is you you first do the unconstrained case. And then you go in by hand and you start moving things around to match the, match the peaks, and then you do the run again. Um, and you see where everything, everything falls out. And in some cases, it's relatively easy to match perfectly. In other cases, when you've got programs starting and, and stopping and peaks start happening at about the same time, it's a little bit harder. So that's just what's happening in this case. I think it's... Uh, um, in some cases, in fact, this may be the case where you see the, the dip, where it dips below the line um, actually twice. Uh, there um, we're kind of building up reserves in some of the heavy lift and uh, beyond LEO programs because there's not quite enough money to start them. And so the reserves just in the model carry over to the next year until you can use them. And then they carry over again till the next in the next year till you can use them. And that's kind of I think that that bump there is actually an artifact of reserves uh, bumping bumping over. So we we could you know we could work harder and flatten this one to actually constrain to the budget. Um, but uh, mm -hmm. you know it's it's just not worth the effort. As I said, you you would not run your program this way. You'd uh, you'd go back and you'd rethink your whole program before you you tried to to optimize this one. Hey, Sally, Sally. Um, does this, uh, in this scenario, and I think maybe Ed wants to answer this, does, are we using dual Aries for this dash out of Leo <laughs> or single Aries 5 light? Dual. 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 Yeah, it's dual. 
Why are we using Duo? We don't have a lander, do we? It does, we you know, pick, you choose your heavy lift vehicle. No, the, the, ra the rationale like here was to, to examine how much progress you could make towards exploration beyond right. LEO, uh, uh, retiring the space station at the earliest practical time, and using the simplest systems that you could use to get out of LEO. Right. So that we retire the space station at, at 15, Mm -hmm. We don't build the Orion, the Ares 1. That's right. Uh, and, and we focus on building the Ares 5. Mm -hmm. And we don't build the lunar surface systems and the lunar lander. And instead we build the, uh, what's it called, in space. The, yeah, the in space. Uh, in space elements. Uh, yeah, and in we space still elements. Don't, space and we still don't get anywhere until the yeah. end of the next decade. Right. What I was just thinking, would your dashing be a little more graceful if you use a single <laughs> rocket in this case? We do use a single. Do you use a well, single? That's why I ask. Is it dual or yes, single? Yes, it's dual Ares 5 oh, light. Oh, that's oh, what we priced in this one. The no, Ares 5 light. Two rockets, one rocket. One rocket, two launches for the mission. Uh, yeah. No, actually, we, we should be careful. That uh, it's it, The term is, is dual Ares 5 because it's a dual launch when used for a lunar piloted mission. I understand. But actually, in those missions which don't yet actually start beginning until just after, after the curve, for many of them, you actually only use a single, single launch. Single right. launch. Thank you. That yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, you had yeah. a question. Just, it's really a comment. Uh, you know, this really looks a lot like the program of record fit to the FY10 budget. You give up Ares 1, and you get technology development beyond LEO capability. Yeah. But you get your heavy lift online at the same time you retire the station. I mean, that is comforting that the result's about the same. If you fit within the FY10 budget, you don't do anything before 2028. Yeah, I mean, there there really is a, a consistent message that comes out of these uh, these scenarios, and as you said, I mean, it is a little bit a little bit comforting, so to speak. Yeah, so to speak. <laughs> Interesting choice of words. It's consistently bad. Yeah. Next slide. All right. So the summary for the constrained cases, we've already said this, but the um, the current budget guidance is very, very, very limiting, and so far uh, we haven't found a scenario that. Um, includes exploration that's that's viable. It's not to say that it's not out there, um, but we haven't been able to to find it uh, to find it yet. Um, the ISS focused Ares one arrives too late for the ISS. Uh, commercial crew to Leo uh, can support the ISS, but the Ares five arrives in 2028 with no lunar surface systems. The dash out of Leo it isn't. Um, the heavy lift capabilities uh, arrive in 2028. Um, you know, uh, so you can you can start doing uh, doing missions uh, with one launch, as both said. Um, you know, in 2030 or so. Next slide. Okay. So moving on, uh, we're going to look at the next set. But with that background, it's very clear that the next set of options are. Uh, don't have a chance of fitting into the constrained budget. They're going to look only worse than these ones that we thought had at least, uh, um, you know, some possibility. So for all of this next set, uh, we looked at um, uh, the less constrained case, that uh, red budget line that I uh, that I described uh, a little while ago. Um, so the um, the scenarios that we're looking at are the deep space scenarios. Uh, we've got three different variants of this corresponding to three different heavy lift options. Lunar Global, uh, the, the huge shuttle systems, which is close the gap, and uh, Norm, that's, uh, that's kind of your blue plate special, um, and Mars, uh, Mars First. Um, next slide. So moving into the deep space, um, the... Um, uh, assumptions are uh, pretty much what we've been seeing. Shuttle flyout in uh, March 2011, ISS extended, and in all of these scenarios, you'll see that ISS is extended. Um, that we're using uh, uh, dual Ares light vehicles in this. We've got the technology development line. We're using commercial crew to LEO, uh, and our destinations are Lagrange points uh, near Earth asteroids. Um, aiming at flybys, Mars flyby. 
Um, we've uh, deferred the lunar lander and the lunar systems in this case, but that's not to say that this architecture doesn't, doesn't allow the lunar lander. In